and welcome back to Peaks Peak. My name's Lucas and we're sharing our hobbies on 38 acres in Eastern Kentucky. And today we're gonna talk about solar power stations. And I'm gonna start out by just apologizing because I didn't pick the place that had the best lighting to start this video. I picked the place I wanted to spend the afternoon because the weather is awesome and the front porch of my cabin is just where I wanted to be. These solar power stations are something that has made my life so much more convenient. And I love them, but I also know of several problems with them. And so today's video is not necessarily about telling you which one to buy or what's the best one, although we're going to talk about all of the ones I have owned. But today I'm just talking about what you can do with them and what are the pros and cons of each unit that I've owned. Now I'll go ahead and admit, I don't normally bring the Telecaster up here to the porch of the cabin to play. I normally bring an acoustic guitar. But I decided with today's video, me getting out on the porch of the cabin and me enjoying this beautiful spring weather that we've got going on here, that it would make a good intro to the video if we plug in. The first thing that I want to say is that I love these because of their portability and the fact that they're quiet. See, that's what makes it perfect for an environment like this where I wanna play music. If you had an electric generator, it's not an option because there's too much noise. So you might as well not even bother with the guitar. But with a battery power station, you can plug your electric guitar in and there's, there's no additional noise created from this. So that's one of the great benefits is that you can have power without the added noise of a gas powered generator. One of the first cons that I will point out is the fact that these are much more expensive than a gas powered generator. And for all of you that are into hating on electric cars and uh, all, of the, uh, all of the politics and things that go along with all of that stuff, I will just tell you that this is nothing about that because to me, the decision is just all about whether it works or not and whether it's the most convenient or not. I will also tell you that every one of these power stations that I talk about today are power stations that were given to me by the company. So I didn't spend my money on them. And that might change my attitude a little bit if I had dropped the full amount that these things cost. That being said, if you can afford one, there are so many great benefits from having one of these power stations. So since I'm sitting here by the EBL power station, I'll talk about it first. All of the power stations we're going to talk about are 2,500 watt power stations. So they will put out a continuous 2,500 watts. So you can run a table saw, you can run, you know, tools on your job site. I've run air compressors, things like that, that draw a lot of power and they work just fine for that. They, they all have multiple 110 outlets as well as USB A and C outputs. Some of them have like a, a car type plug-in on them. And then all of them have the capability of being charged by a solar panel, but not all of the companies sent me solar panels. So I don't have all of those to compare. This EBL power station I have owned for five months and I have not had any problems with it, but I did stop using it as a main power source in my sawmill shed because when it got really cold, this unit would not power on when it was cold. Some of the other units just won't charge when it's cold, but this one wouldn't even power on. So I took it down to the house and I keep it as my backup power station so that if we lose power, I can plug my freezers into it and keep them running so that I don't have meat spoil on me. Now this EBL brand is, is I think the same company that works with that Grease Cell company. I've done some reviews on some ATV batteries and I've also got Grease Cell uh, solar panels on the sawmill shed and those solar panels work great and they're compatible with this power station. So I really don't have anything negative to say about this power station, but I also have only used it for five months. So kind of take that into consideration. I would say that the biggest pro for this power station is it's one of the cheapest, one of the most affordable power stations you can buy. One of the cons is if you're going to use it out in the cold, it will not power on below a certain temperature. And I think it was somewhere around 30 degrees that I couldn't get it to power on until I took it in the house and let it warm up. So next I'm gonna take you inside the cabin and show you what we're powering the cabin with because this is one of my favorites. This Geniverse is actually the one power station that I've owned the long longest and they were one of the very first sponsors of Peaks Peak. They sent me solar panels 
and they sent me this solar generator and I used it to build this cabin. So we used it for our air compressors and all the table saw and all the other tools that we needed to build this cabin. While I was building this cabin, I had had this for just a couple of months and I was using it really hard and I was overpowering it with the table saw sometimes and I did have one of these units fail. I contacted their warranty department and they exchanged it for a new unit that we have now been using for about 18 months with no issues at all. I also did something that they don't recommend and I took those portable solar panels and I mounted them on the roof of the porch when we finished this cabin. And that was over a year ago. So they've been out in the rain and the snow and everything for an entire year. And they're still working. In fact, right now the sun is not even out and it's adding 14 watts. When I first come in here, we were charging 100 watts into this power station. So it maintains the power on this unit. I will say the pros on this unit are that it is very dependable and it does a really good job of charging on its own and doing all the things that it's supposed to do. I would say the negative is this is one of the most expensive units you can get. Now, Geniverse has actually combined with Jackery. So their product, um, their product quality and customer service and all of that is now combined with Jackery. So that's where you would go if you wanted to find a unit comparable to this. But this has been a really good unit. And like I said, I've had a year of using those portable solar panels left out in the weather and they've held up. So they make a very good product that if you're going to spend the money, you might consider spending the extra and stepping up to a brand like this so that you have that dependability. Now next I'm going to mention a brand that sent us a power station that we no longer have. And that is the Oops Mega 2 power station. We actually went through three of those power stations before we finally gave up and actually gave that to a friend who is able to work on technical devices and we moved on to a different company because that Oops Mega 2, the first unit that we had, when we were charging it in our barn, I went in there and heard it arcing and could look inside it and see arcing going on inside the unit. I'm not so sure it wouldn't have burnt my barn down. I unplugged it and contacted them and they replaced that unit. We never had that problem again. So whatever that was, it might have been a fluke, but we had two more units that would discharge so far that they would no longer recognize that there was any battery power. And so you could plug it in with all of the different types of chargers and none of them would work because the unit wouldn't power on to accept charge. I think that there's, there was no fail safe to keep it from discharging too far. That became very frustrating because I had projects to do and I would go up to my sawmill shed and I had no power, so I couldn't run my tools. And I finally just decided it was more trouble than it was worth. I had a friend who thought he might be able to fix it, so I just passed that one along to him and started working with another company. Now, if you're a follower of my main channel, then you're familiar with my sawmill shed. We mill logs for lumber and that's how we built our cabin and all those things, but we power our sawmill shed with a solar power station. This power station, we came up here the other night and had the lights on and so we ran it down some and today was our first day of a little bit of sun, but not a lot. So it is not fully charged, but right now it is drawing nine watts of power and that's only on one grease cell solar panel on the roof of the sawmill shed. But when we run this, we've got we are usually filming in here, and so we want lots of light. We've got a bunch of LED light bars, and then we have two 150-watt uh, LED high bay lights in here to make it good and bright. And so we'll run these for several hours in the evening, and that takes a lot of power. Um, so right now we're pulling 452 watts of power. And when we use it for an evening, then normally the next day, if it's sunny, it will charge itself back up. And so I maybe in the middle of summer when I'm using it a whole lot every day, I might swap out these and put the EBL station in here for a night 
and that way you know we can keep i can take one down and plug it in and charge it up if i'm using more power than what we can draw on the solar panels but most of the time this is a self-sufficient system we have one panel on the roof and again we're using those portable panels and the reason i chose to do that is simply because i'm trying to torture test those portable solar panels I'm not going to take them camping and, and set up and do that sort of thing. It's not really, it's just not something that we do. So in order for me to test those and know how they're going to hold up and be able to give you guys some advice, I figure the best way is to just leave them out in the weather all the time, see how they're doing. And so far I have not had a failure. Now I'm not recommending that you do that. But I'm telling you that if you have one of these portable solar panels and you go camping and it rains for a weekend, it's not going to hurt it. It'll be just fine. The All Powers Power Station, we've only had for three months. So I hesitate to be too positive about it because you never know what might happen in the future. But so far, it has performed really well. As good as any of the others that I have in that it charges really well, it's consistent, it has never done anything funky like I come up here and have to hold the power button to get it to reset and turn on. Um, most of the others have done that a time or two, just some kind of weird glitch, but this one has always done just exactly what I expect it to do. So, so far so good on this. I'll keep you updated if it fails, I'll share that information with you, but the All Powers Power Station is also another very affordable unit about half the price of that Jackery brand and Geniverse brand units. So this is one that I would seriously consider if you're kind of on a budget, but you want to get into one of these power stations. This one also has something that my Geniverse does not, and that's a 30 amp plug on the front here. So you could use it to wire up a transfer switch or something like that on your home. So the main point of today's video is to just kind of introduce you to this technology and let you know how I'm using it and how much I enjoy it. It's not cheap, but in an environment where you do a lot of filming or you like to play music, any, or in any environment where you just want things to be peaceful and quiet, but you want electricity, these are the solution and they work pretty well. Every time I've dealt with customer service on any of these brands that I've mentioned. They've all been really responsive and taken good care of me. Even the, the unit that I chose to not continue using, they sent me replacements. They were responsive. They paid for shipping. They, they were just great to deal with. So I wouldn't discourage you from considering any of the brands because they will stand behind them. But I've had the best luck, I believe, with the Geniverse brand and the All Powers brand so far. Now, again, I want to reiterate that all of these power stations came from sponsors of our main channel, Peace Peak Hobby Homestead. They don't sponsor our outdoors channel, but I still did get them from sponsors. So I want you to be aware of that, but I also felt like this was relevant information for an outdoors channel because a lot of us are out camping and doing those kind of things, and we want the same thing. We want peace and quiet, and we want to be able to charge our devices and all the things that we use. They're also great for work sites and job sites and sawmill sheds and, and all of that. So a lot of great uses for these solar power stations. If you're considering one, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or look up our email on the About Us page and, and send me an email. If you're interested in one of these, I'm going to put links to where you can buy them down in the description. And until next time, get outside and enjoy God's creation because it is beautiful out here. And y'all have a good day.